Mr. Speaker. Order. The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day. Item 1. Resumption of debate on the President's address. The question is that the following address in reply to the speech of the President be agreed to. We, the Parliament of the Republic of Singapore, express our thanks to the President for the speech which she delivered on behalf of the Government at the opening of the second session of this Parliament. Engineer Li Biwa. Speaker,请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请请
尽早的落实黄部长昨天在国会所说的 ：“We hear you, we are with you, together we will make it real。”我们都很期待 “make it real” 的那一天。身为议员，我们常常要处理清洁和邻里纠纷的问题，这些问题。往往当局没办法完全解决，解铃还需系铃人，需要当事人愿意妥协，愿意承担一部分责任。在这方面，我们还需要更加努力。以上的问题没有标准答案，无论是国会议员、公务员或是政府，都必须继续。聆听新加坡人的意见，和新加坡人一起创造出答案。Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to put my vote of thanks to the President for delivering a speech that not only inspires but points us to the direction that we must collectively work towards in the coming years. Our next generation of ministers are all lined up and ready. To run the next lap, and we are fortunate to have a system where there is orderly handover of the torch, so that the flame continues to burn. May I take this opportunity to congratulate the 4G team on their appointment, and we like to thank all those ministers who retire. Mr. Speaker, I'm confident that together we can build Singapore as a good example of a democratic. And multiracial society. As I look back the past weeks, the milestone events from the select committee hearings to the appointment of new office bearers would doubtless show our resolve to continue with the way we have been running our country. In the best interest of our people, there's a Singapore way, whatever the naysayers may be hooting. Unlike them. We are proud to be Singaporeans. Unlike them, we don't set sail in the same boat with the likes of Simbad the sailor. We don't believe in whatever will be will be. We believe in charting the right course after taking all the re relevant readings on the compass. Now let me turn to a topic that is a hot topic: when parents get together, education. Regardless of which school your children go to, so long as they are happy, they learn, they make good friends, they are in good schools. All schools have the same core syllabus, and the teachers and principals are rotated around. Not every school can be RI or RGS. I agree with Honourable Member Sheryl Chan. What is more important? Is character building, good moral values, and whether the children can be contributing positively to the family, to the society, and to the country. I'm indeed very pleased that our education minister had assured in the addendum that his ministry will continue to strengthen its focus on character and citizenship education, and enhance values in action programs. We have been very bold in the past few years in tweeting our education system to put less stress on our students and introduce experiential learning. Many of the new ideas introduced are commendable. Students don't just go to school to gain knowledge; they are also exposed to community service. There's a lot more outdoor learning, and even at the ITE, polytechnics. Universities, they are put on internships. This would greatly help to build up a talent pool of thinking and adaptable people as they stream into the job market. All these efforts producing a new generation of young people. I think our country may not have seen the full impact of this new learning because many of the students are still studying. And the numbers that got into the job market is still small, but I have seen many who come to help me in my meet the people session. I must say, 
they are impressive. As we take steps to move away from the very state and rigid old system of education, we as parents must also give encouragement to our children and assure them that the school that they are in is a good school. Next, I want to ask that we as a community would have to move forward with confidence. We need to discard the kiasu mentality so we don't have to go around chopping seats, rushing into trains, or pretending not to notice that you are taking up the seats meant for the elderly and pregnant women in the train. We need to learn to be more gracious. Yes, graciousness is something that we all can adopt. It is within our means to achieve. Let me share with you my encounters. We have a children playground in a private estate in Nisun South. And it is very popular among children, especially in the evening. And recently, a man bought his dog, brought his dog to the playground and used the children playground equipment to train his dog. Many parents were very unhappy. Some emailed me and they said, this is not correct. Children playground should be for kids. It is very unhygienic. On the other hand, the man with the dog said, why not? Which M Park X say that he cannot use the children playground equipment to train his dog? Another example, a man smokes in his home and the smoke drifted to the unit upstairs and the man living in the unit upstairs was not happy so they had some friction. The man who smoked said, I have all the right to smoke in my own home. The man living upstairs said, I have all the right to have clean air and to protect my health and my family members' health. So if everyone argues like the two examples above, where do we go from here? Can we be more considerate and show compassion for others? Are we too quick to point fingers at others? Have we ever paused and think if we are doing enough for our community, our environment, and our nation? Can we make the bold change in behavior, in attitudes, etc., for the next lap? so that we can together have a stake in building up the gracious Singapore. Help the less privileged and those with special needs so that they too can participate. So when introducing new policies, please ask how this will help to bring down the barriers and let people mix together irrespective of economic class, race or religion. We must review what we have done and look at where we must improve. For example, are we not able to do more for our SMEs? Can we help them to build their track records and bring them overseas? We have a few strong Singaporean companies such as the banks, DBS, UOB, OCBC, and we have airlines like SIA, Scoot, Silk Air, and others such as Capital Corp, Capital Land, and so forth. But we need to grow more such Singapore Inc. to boost our economic growth. We need to stay relevant to the world. Leadership is never so challenged as it is in today's world. The need for us to adjust to meet the changed social environment has been a long time coming. We will build on the foundations laid down by our pioneers who have set the ground. We need to continue to work hard, which is our virtue,
perhaps harder than our founding generation, as the world is changing at very fast pace. In doing so, we must exercise good judgment and not discard what is working just for the sake of big bold. We must get some basics right, such as getting our society to be more gracious and more considerate, to accept that we live in a closely knit community. This initiative and effort must begin with us. We see very conflicting demands from different people, each with different ideas, and each claiming they have their rights to this and that. If we don't start to address this your right and my right issue, the narrative will separate people. It will metastasize like cancer cells. It will wreck our society. We must act now if we don't want to be known as a one divided country with divided hearts. Thank you.